the value series continue and, and here we're going to be talking about how many values satis satisfy a specific absolute value. Um, questions like these usually show up on the S uh, ACT, not the SAT, but I really don't see why the SAT wouldn't throw a question like this on a future exam. So let's do this. My name is Kat Sieberson. I am the inventor of the Sieberson Method, a scientifically proven way to learn anything fast. And I love talking to you guys about everything test related. Let's do this. Pause the video. What did you answer? What are the possible values of A, integer values? Can A be zero? Can A be one? Is zero an integer? Let's take a look. Is zero an integer right there? Uh, all whole numbers are integers. Easy, that was easy. Now, can A be negative five? Have you thought about the negatives? So let me give you the whole spiel. So A could be, absolute value of A could be less than five. So it's negative four, it's negative three, it's negative two, it's negative one. Zero, one, two, three, four. How many is it together? Nine. The right answer here is nine. Next, how many integer values satisfy a plus one is less than six. I want you to think about it deeply. So pause the video. Let's check it out. Can a be a negative five? Can a be a negative six perhaps? Oh, it can be, because negative 6 plus 1 will be negative 5, and absolute value of negative 5 is less than 6. So we have negative 6, negative 5, negative 4 even, negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, 3. We need you to be, I need you to be careful with the ending, 4. Can five be it? Nope, that's it. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. So eleven values can satisfy this situation. We can include negative six, we can include negative five, and we can go all the way up to four in the positive integers. So that's eleven. Um, and in the light of these. Um, teachings, I want to introduce you to a complicated question. It has to do with radicals and it has to do with absolute value. I derived this question from a test from 2016. This is an international SAT. It's a little bit um, challenging. I kind of debated whether to include it or not, so I actually skipped it initially. But now I think you guys are ready. So it looks like this is question three, but don't be fooled, <laughs> this is question 33 on the calculator section, so let me just fix that real fast. This is 33 or maybe even 35. Um, pause it, give it a stab, and then when you come back, I'm going to solve it for you. So we have x and y are real numbers. If you don't remember what real numbers are, absolutely Write that down. Real numbers are all of the numbers except for infinity and for complex numbers. So real numbers include fractions, negatives, radicals, pi, all of the numbers, but excluding complex numbers, the guys with the i, and we're excluding infinity. That's all there is. So I don't want you to think that x and y have to be integers but a smallest possible integer value of the sum. So one value could be uh, 1.5 and another value could be 3.5. And then all together, they give you a five, but um, by themselves, they're not integers. Sounds good? Keep that in mind. 
The second thing that attracts me about this question is that it actually includes both the absolute value and the radical that are in the way are following the exact same process when we need to solve it. Step number one, if you watch the first video, you know that it's isolate. Step number two, get rid of the walls. And for radical, it would be get rid of the radical. Getting rid of the walls, depending on whether you have an absolute value equation or absolute value inequality would be different. Go back to the first video if you haven't watched that one. And getting rid of the radical looks like squaring both sides. Step number three is solve. And step number four is always plug it back into the equation. See if it works. So, so essential to always see if absolute value produces a positive value because it's a distance. And you should know that it denotes the distance if you watch the video about creating absolute value. And for radicals, it also has to produce an absolute value. It also has to produce uh, a positive value to avoid dealing with complex numbers. So always have the fourth step of plugging it back into the equation. All right, so uh, because we're talking about the smallest possible integer, with the absolute value inequality, I have some leeway. I have like possibilities, but with the x, with a radical, I don't have any possibilities. So first, I would be interested in learning what the x equals to. So step one, isolate the radical. I'm going to do that fast to keep the length of the video short. So uh, forgive me if I'm skipping steps. Um, this is equal to 3 over 2. Uh, all I did is I brought uh, 2 over, and they divided both sides by 2. Now I'm going to square both sides, which will give me x minus 4 is equal to 9 fourths. And then I'm going to add 4 to the other side. So x is equal to 9 fourths plus 4. And this is a calculator section, so I'm going to use a calculator. And this is equal to 6.25. This value is definite. We don't have possibilities. It's going to be 6.25. Now, what are my possibilities for y? Remember how to solve an absolute value inequality? We take the equal sign in the exact same inequality sign in the exact same direction as we see it in the problem. And we say 2 and then negative 2. And then we keep the insides. And then... How do we isolate y by itself? We add 5 on both sides. So y is somewhere between 7 and somewhere between 3. So 3 is the smallest, and then it could be 3.01, 3 3.02. So 3 doesn't, it doesn't get included, but anything that's a little bit greater than 3 will, will be included. So 6, and as I'm writing 9, ha ha, 6.25 plus some kind of y is equal to an integer. So if we know that y has to be greater than 3, that means 9 is not going to be one of our answer choices because we're adding something that's greater than 3, but we could add... 3.75 and 3.75 is within the range and the answer is going to be 10. So this is a heady problem. There's a lot of things to keep in mind, but all of it is um, in my mind tying back to how many values satisfy absolute value. And then here the answer was nine and here the answer was 11. Hope this helped you guys. We're gonna go into a much harder problem where we're going to be talking about margins. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.